Hello and welcome to Backpacking Around, the budget travel podcast. My name is Tommy B and in this week's episode we are going to tell you about my most epic travel challenge yet. Joining me as ever, the man with the most wonderful Irish accent I've ever heard in my life, Elliot Noble. Hello Tom, thanks for the compliment. That's quite all right. And with perhaps the worst Irish accent I've ever heard in my life, Gabriella Sigda. <laughs> 100% on that one. And we have a special guest this week Woo-hoo! who's going to tell this story. It is Mr. The Wonderful Dominic Halford. Hello, Tom. It's a pleasure to be back. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you back. Um, so this week we're talking about this crazy-ish sort of travel challenge that Dom actually set me a couple of years ago when we were traveling together in Thailand and Laos and Cambodia. Just to set the scene for you, I'd been traveling in India and Thailand and Myanmar for about two months before I even met Dom. And then later I met Elliot up in Pai in Thailand. If you've not been to Pai, go to Pai. It's amazing. It's one of the most magical places on earth. We're probably showing you some pictures of it right now. Doesn't it look beautiful? Yes, it does. Go there, go visit. Stop listening to this and go to Pi. Book a ticket now. I actually haven't been there, so I guess I gotta go. I gotta leave the podcast, right? Because I shouldn't be on here if I haven't been there yet, right? He's a fraud. (laughs) Anyway, we were up in Pi. We were having a few drinks, getting to know each other because we'd only met about a week before, before this evening. And um, Dom, do you, do you remember what happened? Uh, well, I remember we completely lost contact with you, Tom. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, me and Elliot went up to Pi. And we were walking down the walking street in Pi, just going to go get a drink. And we just see Tom there and we're like, do you want to come with us? Tom was like, sure. So how, yeah. long, how long was this radio <laughs> silence from Tom that you had experienced? Mm, a few days, it was, wasn't it? It's quite. A, I think it must have been about ten days. I reckon a week. Yes, that's a, but you still remembered his face, so that's yeah. Well, how would you forget his his face? Yeah, it's unforgettable. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. I agree. Well, I think I think we've actually just not got any contact details with one another. No, I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So it was one of yeah. these crazy like sliding door moments where. We thought that was a, a travel friend you had met and, you know, they had gone their separate ways, like with loads of people you meet, but not in this case. Me and Dom were walking down the walking street, as Dom just said, and there we see Tom and very casually we said, do you want to go for a drink? And say if we were five minutes later or we hadn't, you know, seen Dom, you would definitely not have been watching this video. Mm-hmm. So uh, that evening we went to Sunset Bar in Pai. It's a gr- lovely bar. Uh, we really enjoyed it. It's a great place. Uh, if you're in Pi, check it out. And I'll pass it back over to Dom. But what happened then, Dom, during the our conversation? Well, we, so I'm lost. Wait, wait so yeah, so we met Tom. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, we met Tom on Walking Street and then just went to the bar and the rest was history. So we had a few drinks. Right, and that's the podcast over. The rest <laughs> is history. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Thanks for being on the show, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no so yeah we, we got to sunset bar had a few drinks and tom was telling us all how he was from bulgaria and had never met a bulgarian while traveling and he really wanted to so i said to tom if you find a bulgarian tonight i will give you 1000 baht and i think tom must have asked 100 people that night where they were from <laughs> oh, none I of them were bulgarian up, i was going up to everybody in the bar Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, you you don't sound like, like I can't place your accent. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Ukraine. Okay, see you later. Oh, yeah, nice to meet you. Where, where are you from? Oh, I'm, I'm from Liverpool. Bye. Okay. It was that all <laughs> night long. And I think we went to another bar, didn't we? We, we went up the road to um, another place. Paradise. Yeah. And um, there were no Bulgarians there either. There was a dog which chased us inexplicably terrifying um, why why did the dog chase you i don't know <laughs> oh, what dogs in thailand you didn't, you didn't you didn't pee on its turf or something did we <laughs> well, <laughs> well maybe 
<laughs> All I remember from that is thinking how quick Tom was. It was me and Elliot like just sort of jogging oh, away, yeah. and Tom was just gone. Tom was miles away. <laughs> yeah, that was the night we realised we had Usain Bolt in the group. I just. <laughs> Yeah. I was going to go for Road Runner, but I'll, I'll, I'll take Usain Bolt. I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah. Um, and then we went to another bar in the centre of Pi, uh, where we met a very angry Scottish man um, who took a bit Holy of a shot. Holy fuck! I completely oh, I forgot, forgot this. Oh my god! <laughs> he wasn't Bulgarian. He was Scottish. So and he was dear. mad. He was angry. Yeah, he was singing like, "Hey." The English chant, like, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, <laughs> and I was just sat there. Like, what do I do? Yeah, and like think, you know, two good friends do. They Dom and Tom sort of position themselves at the corner of the of the room we were in, and the Scottish guy had sort of enclosed me in a corner, you know, <laughs> and I was pinned. So Dom and Tom were like, "This is ideal for us." But I was getting more and more like, "Is this guy going to swing at me?" Or because he was saying like he hated English people. Then, you know, he could have gone on to Irish people. It could have got worse things. It could have escalated. Um, luckily for me, he did, you know, simmer down and we were able to leave. But that was our first eventful night trying to find a Bulgarian. And because we had so much fun looking for a Bulgarian person, Dom decided to go, you know what? If during the course of our travels, you find a Bulgarian, I'll give you a thousand baht. Um, how was the conversion rate of a thousand baht? About what, 30 US. 20, 20, is it that much? 30 US. 30 US. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Gave away more than I thought. Yeah. So I remember we, we went out for drinks the next night and I don't think we found any Bulgarian. Well, we obviously didn't find any Bulgarians there. Um, we did. We, I encountered a man who had been born in Greece five minutes from the Bulgarian border. Didn't like him. He annoyed me you know parents could have moved or something but they didn't um and then i remember we went to um the jungle party up in pi so we went to this jungle party and they organized one i think it's every week up in pi or organized mm -hmm. um and you get into this little taxi and they ship you off into the middle of the jungle they have a bar set up they have a sort of disco and a dj and all this sort of stuff there was a they have like fire shows people doing like acrobatics with fire and it's like a really fun social event and everyone kind of goes a bit wild well i was going around i left these guys to just sit by the fire and have some drinks it was expensive the alcohol i remember that mm. and uh, i was just going around speaking to as many people as possible being as social as possible asking if they were from bulgaria and i didn't meet any bulgarians i met two south africans which was nice and I also encountered one woman who was very offended by the fact that I was insinuating she could be Bulgarian. <laughs> well, in retrospect, Tom, from? do you not think you trying to convince her she's Bulgarian was offensive? Well, all I did was I went up to her and said, excuse me, are you from Bulgaria? And she said... What? Are you trying to say that I look like a Bulgarian? <laughs> Where is she from? Well, yeah. she, was, she was English. Um, oh. But I was like, well, no. And then she's like, well, why did you ask if I'm Bulgarian then? I'm like, well, because it's just the question I ask people. I, why are you getting so angry about this? <laughs> so I ran away from her like a coward. Um, and then I think at that point you guys had left and I jumped in a taxi and um, went home. But it was one of these taxis that um, had like an open back like they do in, in Thailand. And they refused to stop at my hostel. I don't think I've told you this bit. So they refused no. to stop at my hostel. Um, so instead they slowed it down and I had to jump out the back while it was still moving. <laughs> what? Wait, why did they, why? I don't know. So they were just like, we can't stop, we can't stop. You're going to have to jump. Pretty much. And they did slow yes. it down. And, like, obviously I was fine, but... That's very peculiar. It yeah. was a bit weird. Yeah. But, um... So what hostel yeah. did you stay in, uh, Tom, for anyone thinking of going to Pi here, listening to this podcast? Well, I stayed in Spicy Pie, which is a 
really cool sort of treehouse style hostel. But unfortunately, at the moment, I believe it's not operational. I believe all the, mm. the trees have taken it over, which is kind of sad. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, tourism isn't that possible at the moment anyway. Uh, so, yeah, Dom and I, we, we decided to carry on. We went traveling further. Elliot, you went off to the south of Thailand. And Dom and I decided to go to the north and into Laos. So we got a bus up to Chiang Rai, um, I spent a couple of days there, visited the beautiful white temple. While we were up in Chiang Rai, we went to a bookshop. Do you remember this, Dom? Yeah, I remember going there because he was quite, a, I think he was a German guy who owned it. Hmm. Um, yeah, he was quite a nice guy, actually. But yeah, like, I mean, reading is not something I do as often as I probably should. But I know Tom's <laughs> a big fan of his books. <laughs> So while we were in this bookshop, we were looking around and we were sort of picking out one or two books to purchase because the next day we were going to go on the long boat down to um, Luang Prabang in Laos. So you've got two days on a boat. You haven't got any internet. What are you going to do? You're going to drink. You're going to read. You might play cards. They're your options. And so we were looking around at, at what sort of books there are available. I got myself Brave New World. No, uh-huh. uh-huh. Actually. Yeah. <clears throat> Thought it was a crap book. We were looking around and I got myself Brave New World. You know, I thought I'd be a bit erudite, buy myself a nice, fancy, classical book. And I also was just looking around and I saw something catch my eye. And it's this book here. Oh, <laughs> I remember you buying that. Actually. What? <laughs> and I thought, right, well, this counts. This is a Bulgarian, sort of. Where's my hundred bars? <laughs> oh, didn't give me anything. But I, I, I actually read this on the longboat in a day, and it's a very mediocre thriller. So that was fine. Um, but yeah, do you want to do you want to share the story about the longboat, Dom? Yeah, so I remember we met a lady in Shanghai who told us she owned the boat. She was like, "Oh, yeah, it's my boat. I'll give you priority seats. You'll be right at the front. You're getting a great discount." Do you, do you remember what else she told us? No. <laughs> he told us that her husband was Bulgarian. <laughs> Did she? What? I don't. I don't even remember that. I've still was got that her phone number. <laughs> and was this funny. woman Thai? In or... that way. <laughs> <laughs> was this lady Thai or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry. Go on. But yeah, so we got on a boat. We had no priority seats. We were stuck at the back. I mean. It, it was an okay boat, the first one we got on, I thought. Couldn't complain. <laughs> but I would say you need beers or something, because the first day, I think it was about a seven-hour journey, and we had beers, me and Tom. So we were sorted. We were just drinking and asking everyone if they were Bulgarian. I think we asked every person on the entire boat, more yeah. or less, where they were from. <laughs> I mean, as, as much as this is a fun activity to do while you're traveling, there's a very limited scope while you're on a boat for seven hours. So there's only about 80 people to ask. Yeah. yeah. But then I remember we got to that little island. N- not a little island. Like We stopped on the river halfway. I think you can only get there by boat completely. There was nothing there at all, really. Um, we, Me and Tom had a little private room. I think we paid... like. It was really cheap, I remember. I think it was like one or two pounds or what, three, yeah. four dollars. Was it Pac Bang? Oh, I can't remember. But um, yeah, then obviously we woke up next day, got on the boat again, but this time we didn't have any beer. And I remember <laughs> that journey dragged so much because <laughs> obviously we already knew where everyone was from. We had no beer and we were just. And did you find there. anyone? from a neighboring country like that was so close to them being bulgarian not, not that i remember but when we got to luang prabang we we're in the hostel there i did meet a romanian guy okay thought, You're getting oh, close. sort of close yeah um but yeah no no bulgarians nothing close on that boat I remember telling you, Dom, to just read your book. Every time you're like, oh, I'm bored. I was like, read your book. <laughs> I read like a chapter. <laughs> but <laughs> Dom is like a whole novel, so, you know. Yeah, I really wanted to get into reading, but I failed, ultimately. <laughs> to be fair, but there was beautiful landscape moving past. Like, there was something. Yeah. Like... I do remember the first day when we were at the back of the boat, we had the engine. 
and like I, I, mm. I couldn't concentrate on reading and that's that's a good part of why I became a temporary alcoholic um <laughs> Tom is recovered yeah. now though yeah we got to Lorraine Prabang <laughs> and we had a nice time there it was a really cool little village town city somewhere in between maybe yeah one of those things um met this romanian guy we met the australians and we went to oh yeah those australians <laughs> do you remember the cave as well i do yeah i remember it it was you had to pay what was it about a dollar to get in and you got a banana and a little flashlight in, in return <laughs> 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 but I, I don't like bananas in England, but that was one of that was probably the best banana I've ever eaten in my life. I think you went too deep into the cave because obviously after a point, but it's just it's just like a dark <laughs> corridor oh, to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Apparently, yeah. the deeper you get in, you start coming across snakes and spiders and stuff. So we probably got out at the right time. Mm-hmm. How long were you in there for? <laughs> we went probably what 15 minutes into it something like that i don't know i don't remember i don't like caves after the wang prabang we were talking about purchasing a tuk-tuk and driving around asia in tuk-tuk um but we did go down to vientiane not vientiane we went down to vang vieng vang vieng yeah yeah and that bus journey, well, mini bus journey, was one of the most oh uncomfortable God. things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> they crashed. The in. Oh, Sorry? No. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was the roads or the... Well, it was a combination of things, Gabby. Um, they crammed us into the mini bus. And so I was sat at the back <clears> with <throat> three men um, who all were sort of manspreading their legs out as much as humanly possible. So, you know, I was feeling very constrained. And there were no seatbelts, which, I mean, okay, I get it. You know, some parts of the world don't really do seatbelts as much. Fine. However, the bus driver decided to bomb it down the road at over 100 kilometers per hour over these little bumps. And so every time we went over one, I was (laughs) jumping up, (laughs) hitting my head on the ceiling. Well, you had Chad and Steve to kind of like hold you in place, you know, so... Well, they, they, they were so straight, they didn't want to touch me, so they were trying to move away as much as possible. Yeah, leaving me to float up. Um, <laughs> and eventually, we, we stopped at the halfway point, and like, I think we were getting a drink or something, and I felt like I, I, I would have preferred to walk all the way to Bang Vieng. And was, was Dom on this bus as well? Where was Dom in this situation? Yeah. I was nearer the front, I think because I think we were the last two on the bus. I didn't have as much problem as I think Tom did, because it was just me and one other guy, and I didn't hit the ceiling. And on so this bus, did you, did you bother asking anyone, were they Bulgarian? Oh, they were all very clearly English. <laughs> oh, right, okay. From their laddish <laughs> chants. Oh, they were like, yeah. lad, they were real lads. They if were you, all in my room. Oh, yeah, they were. If you've ever seen the Inbetweeners movie, the moment where they get to um, Greece or wherever they are, and they're on the bus to their hotel, and all the <laughs> boys are singing, "We are you, It was like that for two hours. That sounds terrible. That's a good way of describing it. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually, we got to Vang Vieng, and we went straight to a hostel, dropped our bags off, and if you don't know Vang Vieng, it's a bit of a bit of a party town um there's a lot of bars there there's the tubing as well um obviously gabby has you've lived there haven't you mm-hmm. yeah. but you were not doing that sort of stuff so i was gonna say did you work there or something gabby for a bit or? yeah i was uh doing gardening work it was volunteer work uh, okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it was, it was really fun actually um um this was back in 2015 so it's quite some time ago you must have been pretty young yeah it sounds cool yeah i think i turned i turned 19 in bang Vieng. it was my birthday wow that's yeah that's very young so if you know bang Vieng, you know it is a big party place and some interesting things happened while we were there but you are going to have to stay tuned to our next episode to find out about that and to find out 
where, how, and if we even met a Bulgarian. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It would do us a world of a favor. Uh, give us a like and let us know down below if you've ever met a Bulgarian traveling. Yeah, Probably let us know. Been. Let us know, <laughs> like, subscribe, uh, all of that amazing stuff. Uh, and a big thank <laughs> you to the one and only Dom for coming on. Uh, let's hope we'll see you in part two, Dom. Fingers crossed. Yes. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Ciao. Bye, everybody.